Hello everyone, it's Lori Burris with the Catch a Pocket Podcast. Quarantine edition. Tonight, episode 21, we have Cody Moore. Cody Moore is a 20-something singer-songwriter who also does body piercing. He's very interesting. You're going to love him. Stick around. Got a couple of his tunes on here. It's well worth your time. I appreciate your time. If you have time, since I'm talking about time, if you have any time, why don't you like or follow or tweet or share or whatever the hell it is that we're doing anymore, the Catch a Pocket podcast, because it makes me feel good. That's the only reason, just because it makes me feel good, because I'm not asking for your money. If you want to donate money, if you have money, if anyone has money, donate to Cody Moore or any other local body piercer, singer, songwriter, hairdresser that isn't getting any money right now because they can't do their job. We're all self-distancing for our own safety and the safety of others. And God bless us for doing that, for real. So I can't give any more credit than credit is due to um, our our governor, Laura Kelly. And I don't even care, you guys. This isn't political. This is, thank God we have someone with sense running this state. So, without further ado, and without pissing anyone else off today, maybe, possibly, that's probably, that's probably a lie, I present to you, Mr. Cody Moore. Enjoy. I'm here with Cody Moore, and he's a musician here in Wichita. Were you born in Wichita, Cody? No, I was born. um, I was born in Oklahoma, but um, I moved to Kansas when I was very young. So I grew up in a small town um, of Pollen, Kansas, about 400 people. So you moved to uh, Kansas from Oklahoma, just born there as a child, and moved. After how many years? Um, well, I moved when I was really young. Um, went to kindergarten and everything in Potwin. And then my parents split up when I was about in probably second grade. Mm-hmm. So I kind of moved back and forth from Oklahoma to Kansas. Like okay. every, probably like every like four years, I'd be like, well, I want to go live here. I want to go live there. Right. Just kind of moved back and change. forth. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. So um, when you went to school, you went um, to Potwin school. They only have one school or you uh, go somewhere else? Yeah, well, you go to the elementary schools in Potwin, and then the uh, middle school is in Whitewater, and then okay. the high school is like in between a little, little, little tiny. It's called the town, but it's called Brainerd, and it has literally like three houses. Wow! But yeah, it's, Brainerd. I think I've been through there. I think I'm serious. I think it's called Brainerd. It's something like that. I don't. Sure. I don't know. All I said was my high school's in a field. And right. That's all I knew. So. So that when you went back and forth, you were maybe in your teenage years, what happened? Um, mainly, so my teenage years were pretty, pretty bland. You know, I mean, I was, I, I partied a lot though when I was actually 14 and 15 instead of when I was like 17 and 18 and stuff. Okay. Um, you just had good connections or something I, like that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I lived when I was, and it was mainly when I lived in Oklahoma. Um, okay. so my best friend lived with me. We lived out in the country um so i was you know out there partying all the time right. you know when my mom my mom wouldn't know about it i would just go party and like when she was working yeah. or something like that and then i moved back to kansas about the age of 15 almost 16 and i ended up moving out when i was 16 at my dad's house and lived with my friend and i started a band with him and my cousin and i 
played drums for a grunge band for probably about till I was 19 years old. Okay, and that's is that where you started music? Yeah, um, I started music a little before that, just like practicing, just like messing around, little mm-hmm. garage stuff, you know, right. like with my drums. And I didn't really pick up guitar and play guitar. Like I played it, but it wasn't ever serious. It was kind of just I tinkered with it every now and then. Sure. And so um, you played drums first yep. as your first instrument mm-hmm. and in a grunge band. And what was the name of the grunge band? Uh, the Folded Plains. Folded Plains. And they were here in Wichita? Yes. Uh, we played a lot of shows in Wichita. We played a lot at the Lizard Lounge and okay. stuff like that. Like, oh. And you were young. You were yeah, uh, underage. Like, it was like 16 and stuff. So uh, if you're underage and you go play a bar, mm-hmm. as soon as you're done playing, you have to leave. Okay. You have to leave the bar. Um, but you so. would sit in the back of the bar and drink beer. No, no. Oh. I mean, I wish, but no, no. It's more like we'd go home and I would drink beers okay. after that. So they, yeah. they wouldn't just let you be cool with the band no. or anything. You had to no. go. Yeah. Okay, that sucks. But so. uh, I never really thought of that. Yep. Um, I played ICT Fest in 2014 with, with that, that band. Sam. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I recently just played ICT Fest this year um, for the first time since 2014. And you're a solo artist? Yes. Okay. And do you have a group that you play with sometimes nope. or just yourself? It's just me. That's awesome. You know, what What made you evolve into that? Um, so in 2018, I made a band called The Violet Ray. Okay. Um, and I played guitar. And I sang, which it's kind of a lot of the same songs that I have. Mm -hmm. And I'm very blues influenced and stuff like that. So the Violet Ray was more like we took blues, but I had solos. So my solos would be more grungy instead of being more bluesy. And so that was going great. And then uh, my drummer ended up quitting. So I was like, I took a little bit of a break till probably... October or November Mm -hmm. of last year and then I decided okay I'm just gonna do it myself so right and then I don't want to rely on anybody so I just kind of picked up my own stuff and went with it okay that's really cool um so who are your inspirations um I love Robert Johnson Mm -hmm. um I love Lightning Hopkins and R.L. Burnside oh wow so you're talking about really yes old blues yeah um I'm all, I'm really, really big on old school blues. Mm -hmm. Um, If I'm not listening to that, I'm listening to like 90s grunge, like Soundgarden and stuff like that. That's my other favorite genres. Like Nirvana Uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big Chris Cornell fan more than I am a Nirvana fan though, but I love um, grunge. Yeah. But I'm all self-taught in guitar. Um, when it comes to, I might say I'm blues influenced, which is more towards my lyrics because mm-hmm. I grew up listening to Bob Dylan. Sure. So I'm more of a storyteller than I am a guitar player. Um, my guitar, my guitars are very simple, but right. my, all my songs kind of tell a story. So that's cool. Um, so your influences, Bob Dylan, old blues you're really into, is that what, what you started with or it was the grunge that kind of got you into the music and then you found the blues and yeah, kind of um, said I'm um, talking that language. Yeah, I it's kind of crazy. So I was in love with grunge growing up, but I was also in love with uh, like Marilyn Manson and stuff like okay. that. Heavy, so, heavy metal. Yeah, and then and like I loved black metal and stuff like okay. that. And then um, after like during my first band, The Folded Plains, I started listening to blues and kind of getting more into that. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just slowly started like the ball started rolling and I just got more and more into old school blues and old school stuff. And so. now when I hear what you're doing, cause I've checked you out on YouTube and stuff, I feel like you're almost a poet. Um, so I would find that kind of like a folk artist in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm very folky. Yeah. And I like that. I mean, it's like blues folk, which is like thought provoking and stuff like that. Do yeah. you like bands that like Depeche Mode and stuff like that that are just kind of dark and sulky like Morrissey and um, that kind of thing kind or? of I listen to a lot of Kaleo and mm-hmm. a lot of um Hosier is that how you say his name I Hosier, think so, Hosier? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to say his name that's a good um, album though but that... yeah I listen to a lot of them um I don't listen to I listen to a lot of chill stuff though too like yeah. a lot of finger picking and folky stuff more than i listen to kind of like darker emo stuff yeah or i used to listen to a lot of emo music yeah but i just kind of got away from that every yeah. now and then i'll still listen just to it just made you too sad yeah well <laughs> not really i'm just it's you know. 
I don't know. It's just, it kind of all just sounds the same to me now. Right. So. Yeah, I get you. Okay, so um, is there anything that you want to tell people about yourself that they might not know already? Um. So when I'm not playing music or not working, I rock climb. Oh, wow. Um, I go on a lot of rock climbing trips. Like the last two years, I've went to New Mexico and camped in the desert for five days. And I go do crazy stuff like that all the yeah. time. I'm trying to go to Arizona this year. Um, and then hopefully I can make it to Norway in like June or July. So You want to rock climb there? Yes. And you have an idea of where you want to go and things like that? Nope. Not yet. <laughs> Not in Norway. I just want to go visit just and figure go see it out. It. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um, so the Southwest kind of pulls at you? Yes. So, um, it's just the desert, or have you ever thought about going, like, Burning Man or something like uh, that? I almost went to Burning Man, but the amount of water you have to bring is right. so insane that I'm like, ah, I'm not, I'm not doing it. too much work. Yeah, I don't want to go out there for a weekend and do all that. I mean, I bet it would be a blast, but sure. it's just... At, I, at any level, I'm it's, sure. It's funny because I hate camping right. unless I'm going rock climbing. Okay. It's the only time. Like, if you ask me to go camping at a lake just to go, I'd be like, oh, no, I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to go just suffer. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. So you're a rock climber. So you're not scared of heights, obviously. Oh, I'm terrified of heights. Oh, really? Yeah. So what caused you to think, <laughs> uh, I want to climb that thing? Well, you know? so I started rock climbing because, um, like I said, I started a band called The Folded Plains. My cousin, he got um, he got murdered a couple years ago, two, okay. two almost three. Um, you're and, in Wichita? Yes. Oh, my gosh. And I just kind of picked up rock climbing as a way to cope. Uh-huh. And so... It's a way to overcome your fears. Like I'm, sure. I'm scared of heights. Um, I have very bad stage fright, um, even. Cool. And I mean, so me too. I it, totally do. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's kind of one of those things that it's like you're never gonna get less nervous than you are right now, so you might as well just do it. And once you get going, it kind of fades yeah. away, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, if you think about the heights when you're rock climbing, you're gonna mess up and it's, you're gonna scare yourself more. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you have to forget it. Um, mm-hmm. I do a thing that's called bouldering, which is where I don't use ropes. I Whoa. climb <laughs> about it. No, bouldering is normally anywhere from 15 to 30 feet and you fall on big pads. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what I do. If you fall, you fall on a pad. Yes, but um, the pads do not feel good. They're no. really, like, really hard. So <laughs> it's, it's not great. But it's... But it, you don't fall. You uh, try not to I fall. I try not to fall. Have you ever so. fallen? Yeah. Um, I've, yeah, but not from like super, super high. Probably like. 18 feet the highest I've fallen from. That's pretty... It uh, yeah. seems like a long time it, when you hit the oh, ground, Oh, no, it? yeah. It's super scary. <laughs> um, I went what's called deep water soloing um, two times this over the summer, which is where we, we went to Missouri. Um, we kayaked out on the river, and it was probably about 50 feet tall, and we climbed the side of the cliffs, and we fall in the water. So, oh, okay. And that was fun. Yeah. And I almost got bit by a snake and almost broke my finger, but it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. I'm also a body piercer. Okay. Um, that's you like my to career. have them? Yes. Oh, you do No, it that's my career. To other people. Yes. Okay. I, I stab people with needles and legally and I make money. Yeah. So, no, um, when I first got into it, I was really scared that like, because you have to go through an apprenticeship. Sure. And I was really scared the first time, like, okay, what if like, because this has been my only dream since I was 12 is to be a body piercer. And uh-huh. if I, you know, I don't have a backup plan. <laughs> and if I stab this person and I freak out, then I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Can't do so, that job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it ended up working out. So it's yeah. fun. Where do you pierce? Um, I pierce at Old Crow over on 3rd and Washington. Cool. So, yeah, that's it's fun. awesome. So, what's the weirdest piercing you've ever given? Um, I don't. I mean, genital piercings are sometimes kind yeah. of weird. It just depends on client basis if it's awkward yeah. or not. But some normally it's really cool. You just keep uh, it sterile like a doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's all professional. Uh, there's not really too many weird piercings that i do um i mean like somebody doesn't just come in and go hey i want my armpit pierced oh no Uh, (laughs) i mean people want some crazy stuff but nothing like that yet but tongue webs underneath the tongue is kind of a little we awkward to pierce like just weird doing it but yeah and kind of invasive almost you know yeah like a dentist yeah People's, yeah. Sometimes people's mouths are gross. Yeah, and they are gross. Yeah. I would think they were gross. Mine, yeah. like, whenever you get in there, it starts saliva. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, there's a lot saliva, of saliva I have away. to deal with, yeah. like, when I do tongue piercings and stuff. Definitely. So, I yeah. can only imagine. Brush your teeth if you're going to come get a yeah, mouth piercing. And, and shower. The whole yes. thing. Just yeah. any kind Belly of. Belly buttons are weird because they stink. 
A lot of people come in to get their belly buttons pierced, and, and they, they don't just, clean it up. Oh, I mean, they think they clean it, but uh, I mean, they'll leave, and for like thirty minutes after they're gone, I'm just like still smelling it, and I'm like, oh man, come on, yeah, it's crazy. I yeah. never even thought of that. Yeah. That's like because you don't smell your own no, belly button, you don't. But if but... you're in there, I guess you you mm-hmm. would definitely smell it. Yeah. Ooh. Anyway, that's a thought. So, um, what is your newest influence right now that you're working are you working on like you have an album out i saw you um launched an album yes um august 2nd i launched this it, august so, yeah. 2nd oh wow so that's fairly new mm-hmm. and the name of it is called it's called slow aside slow aside yeah so why do you call it that um so the album is all if you listen to it it's um it's heavily influenced on my personal life um the backyard bird song is about my cousin um, i like that song a lot We had the answers We thought we knew the world But we were wrong We were just young and dumb back then We only knew the backyard birds We spent our days by the poolside Singing songs about the sky Wishing that we were older And now we're missing our lives We're missing our lives Well, memories last for a lifetime One moment they do pass You will always look back and remember But you will think, why did time Oh God, why he does this to us Why he makes us grow older Is it to watch our friends die Or be his so-called soldiers So put your death suit on, boy Cause you're up next Don't forget the times we had when we were living our best life Hanging out next to the poolside Well, memories last for a lifetime But moments they do pass You will always look back and remember But you will think, why did time Sitting on my back porch Writing songs about where you have gone But you've been gone for way too Fucking long, oh I don't know if I believe in God anymore, boy Where have you gone? Sir, will you give me a sign? Come down and tell me that it is my time Well, what's the point of living life If in the end we all are supposed to die Well, memories last for a lifetime But moments they do pass You will always look back and remember you will think why did time go by so fast you will always look back and remember but you will think why did time go by so fast go by 
fast, so fast. We thought we had the answers. We thought we knew the world, but we were wrong. We were just young and dumb back then. We only knew the backyard. And then a lot of the rest, a lot of it is all about, um, it's, it's a lot about my drinking, Mm -hmm. which like I said, I'm two months sober. Um, congratulations. It wasn't, I just kind of decided to quit because I wanted to focus more on music, but it's a lot of the songs are okay. It, I I talk about selling your soul to the devil a lot Mm -hmm. and then it becoming a mistake because Mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, okay, like. You know, people think I would do anything to be able to do this. But then, like, if you think about it, you got to give something to get something. Right. And you end up being like, well, I shouldn't have done that. And the whole song's about, like, overcoming alcohol because alcohol slowly kills you. You yeah. know, that's what you're you're drowning yourself. That's right. And, like, selling your soul is, like, selling your soul to alcohol. You know, you're just sure. like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then the more and more you do it, you're like, man, like, what – I'm what waking up with a headache every day. I feel like crap. Right. You know, it's just, it's it's horrible. Sure. So that's, the whole song is like about damaging yourself. The whole album is like, sl- that's why it's called Slow Aside. So. Okay. So, and that, and that comes the um, blues influence because Selling Your Soul to the mm-hmm. Devil and then yeah. you got your Robert Johnson. And, yep. And, uh, which is the long fable tale of him selling his soul yeah to become, he's the reason that yeah. that's a thing with music is he's, right like did you watch the documentary on netflix about it i haven't super good it i will, I, will. Good. I love musician documentaries i usually do like those i'm doing that country music thing right now okay. on kpts yeah it's the history i like kim burns a lot because okay. he just um he's very thorough yeah so if you can hang with them i did vietnam war it was great you know i learned so much didn't know about it so but yeah, um, so you're right now influenced, or you just had that album come out. How long did it take you to work on that? Um, so getting up to the album, like I said, so I started doing my solo stuff about November, but I didn't start playing shows till probably like March, like solo shows till like March or April, I would say. Okay. Um, some of the songs are from my Violet Ray album because I, you know, I wrote them and I brought right. them over. Um, all of my songs are original, um, so I didn't record it till August, uh, probably two months before August, or about a month before. Okay, um, and did you it, record it on your own? Or? No, I recorded with um, Red Cat, um, Luke Wallace. He runs Red Cat out in Peck, Kansas. Okay. Um, I it probably took us about five sessions altogether to get all ten songs done. Cool. So sounds really good. Songs, actually, you you sorry. sent them to me, so I'm gonna put a few of them on yeah. this podcast backyard birds yeah that is do you have a bass player playing on that no it's just all me you did it everything in the album is literally just me i don't have any accompaniments or nothing it's just my guitar and me that is i bet that's my favorite song a lot that's Mm -hmm. a lot of people love that song i like it too um also the black what was it black water yeah i thought that was really good too so those are my standouts on that album yeah you did a great job and so I can't wait to hear where you're going in the future. Do you have thoughts on that? Um, so I'm working with a new guitar tuning to be able to kind of play more traditional style blues. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I'm probably about seven songs out of ten songs done with my new album. Like, really? I'm, I'm just like trying to figure it out. And I'm not saying as soon as I get ten, I'm going to go go record. Right. But I'm honestly like just thinking about when my next album is as soon as i put out my first one i was like okay now i gotta work on and figure out my songs for my next one right and did you have trouble when you were putting it out something i always um think is i always want to make it more perfect and more perfect and then i'm just working on it forever and i don't just let it go and put it out there um i'm very easygoing i probably should be more like that like more like nitpicky but when i worked with luke to me it was just perfect i was like okay this is awesome you know he let me have input he put input in Mm -hmm. um i didn't really the whole point of the album to me was supposed to be kind of 
clean cut like this is what i would be like live this is me you know i'm not yeah. trying to you're telling this story yeah i'm not trying to put any extra stuff in there so people and then when people come see me live be like oh well where's that cool little solo or where's that like right. i'm trying to just be like okay this like, is this what is face is. first who i am like cool yeah. i i like it um i think so you have your next album already going and you have things in mind when you're doing that what are you um are you trying to tell a story throughout the the album or are you kind of taking one thing and and it's kind of a mis match of things you know? yeah just a mix match um on all of my songs um even with my first album all of my songs all just tell their own story okay so none of them are linked none of them are connected um, Cool. they're just all their own little thing yeah so okay if so, i tried to write like 10 songs that just continued a story i would probably go crazy so i write <laughs> my too much all of my songs take me about 15 minutes to write really um so i don't force it if it takes me over like 20 minutes even i just kind of just trash it and like okay i don't want to force it so right you, know. Do you ever come back to it later every now and then like i have a bunch of random lyrics written down and that if i really need good things if i need and... help i'll right. like look through my lyrics and be like okay well this is what i'm gonna write this about kind of fits in there yeah. or this kind of goes with the theme that's cool I, do you have one that you want to sing tonight um i can yeah 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 like one of your newer ones uh yeah i mean if you want me to sing a newer one i totally can sure and that way they can hear your album i'll post how to get it and then maybe what's coming up yeah in the future yeah okay that's cool let's do it then um this is one of my newer songs um written in uh, open g tuning which is more traditional blues mm -hmm. um it's called fact okay so all right here's fact They say I'm a simple kind of man But I was born in the valley of the damned So just lend me your ears I'll tell you a secret, my dear Listen to my story, dear I'll show you a shortcut you hear Sell your soul but to get it back Trick the man with the bottle of Jack I'll teach you how to win And that's a fact I've seen so many things in life For people dying to trying to find the light Every time I turn around People cursing the man uptown But the devil, he's alive at night So listen to my story, dear Show you a shortcut you hear To sell your soul but to get it back Trick the man with the bottle of Jack I'll teach you how to win And that's a fact Sell your soul but to get it back Trick the man with the bottle of Jack I'll teach you how to win And that's a fact Jack, I'll teach you how to win, and that's a fact. 
sell your soul but to get it back Trick the man with the bottle of Jack I'll teach you how to win And that's a Teach you how to win And that's a Teach you how to win And that's a fact Awesome, dude. Thanks, hey, thanks. Man. That's a really good song. What was the name of that again? Fact. Fact. Yep. All right. So it was the first song I wrote in open G tuning, so. It sounds really good. You can hear that blues influence totally. I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying, so. Yeah, you're doing really well. And I love your new guitar. Hey, thank you. Yeah, congratulations. And, um, okay, so this podcast is kind of about inspiration. Yeah. And so I was wondering if maybe you had a story about something that inspired you or something that someone else could be inspired by. Um, so the probably the the biggest inspiration I have towards music probably derives from my cousin. Mm-hmm. Um when he was kind of helping me learn music. Mm-hmm. Um when I asked him questions about guitars and stuff, he would say, um, don't worry about the whole like sound and scales of everything just find one sound you like and put it together Mm -hmm. so like we grew up playing music together and everything was great you know backyard birds that song is about because me and him would sit on the back porch smoke cigarettes drink beer and write songs that's all we would do every single night Mm -hmm. um after um well pretty much um after the band got after i quit the band and the band all split up Mm -hmm. um it years went on and you know we were we we talked every single day you know i talked to him pretty much every single day and then probably like two days three days or something before christmas i got a call about him getting murdered um yeah so that instead of taking it very negative to, negatively which i mean it is a very very negative thing i um took it very you know inspire inspirationally or how whatever the word would be Mm -hmm. and like positive because like it shows me that like you can die at any second right you can and you know he would want me to you know he would want me to live my life you could die at any second so why not just do what you want to do you know live your life be who you want as long as you're being nice to people that's that's all you you know as long as you're not harming anybody then then live how you want you know after after all of that i you know, have kind of opened my own business. I'm doing my own solo music. I'm rock climbing. I'm traveling. Mm-hmm. I'm doing things. And you're living. And it it sucks that it has to be from my, you know, one of my best friends. Pretty much, pretty much my brother passing away. But, you know, that like hopefully my story can help people realize that like they don't have to wait till that happens. Right. They can, you know, they can just live their life. Like Backyard Bird says, like the whole thing is pretty much moments will pass but memories will stay it's pretty much the whole basis of the song so like don't don't rush moments like if right. if you're getting in an argument with somebody or anything like that like just kind of fix that and go go from there if you're having a good time don't try to rush if you're having a good conversation in a restaurant don't rush to get out of the restaurant just sit in there and hang out because you might not have that time all the time you know so true they could pass or you could pass or something could happen right so you gotta cherish everything okay so. well that's awesome and that's inspirational for sure. So, and I appreciate you for coming in, catching a pocket with me. Hey, yeah. And anytime. I always welcome. I had a blast, so. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Perfect. Hey, thanks for everybody for listening. Uh, thank you, Cody, for being a part of the pro- podcast. Um, thank you, Kirk, for the music. Thanks, everyone else, for the inspiration and the positive vibes. Like us, share us, tweet us, Uh, don't touch us, stay the heck back, man. Thank you to the nurses, thank you to the doctors, thank you to the scientists. Thank you to anybody who deserves it. Get your face masks on. Don't spread the COVID-19, you guys. Have a great rest of the month or what not can't wait to see you next time on the catch a pocket podcast